Hey guys, time for another long-winded video. Um, so I wanted to ask myself, you know, what do I do if Joe Biden wins the election? You know, I asked my dad this, uh, like, hey, what do you do? Um, like, you've lived under a lot more presidents than I have, uh, what do you do? Now, my dad was born in 1954, and his... My dad was in the Marines, so he tends to have very... In, just. If you know my dad, he has very short and to-the-point answers. Um, <laughs> dinner prayers usually last less than 10 seconds. Um, but I, I love my dad very much. Um, personality is very different from mine, but I love him very much. And I asked him, Dad, what do you do if, uh, what do we do if Joe Biden wins the election? Like, you know, what do I do? And he goes, you live with it. <laughs> he kind of shrugged and said, you live with it. Uh, now, my dad is um, an old-school Republican. Um, I'm very much a Fox News kind of guy. And I I'm somebody where I am more of a... Um, I I'm conservative, but I'm more of a... I, I don't know how you'd describe it. You know, I, I can't really call myself an objectivist because I don't agree with their theological ideas, but, you know, I, I very much agree with their political ideas. I think that the role of government is to prevent one man from using force against another. Um, and so the government is basically meant to be a police officer, and, and that's about it. You know, the government shouldn't be involved with um, saying, no, you can't buy uh, beef from this other country. Um, if a, a man wants to buy a prescription drugs from another country, um, if he wants to order prescription drugs from Mexico for himself, he can, but it's kind of an at-your-own-risk type thing. So I, I think that the government should be doing very, very little um, to meddle in people's lives. If one person is not using force against another, um, then the government really has no bus business being involved. You know, so... It's pretty much if you see cases of force, fraud, or coercion. Um, and the only really exception I can think of to that is um, if it, there's a mental hygiene arrest that needs to take place. You know, like somebody says, hey, I want to cut off my own arm tonight uh, because they're having some kind of psychotic breakdown. Um, then I would say, yeah, you're, he's not really, nobody's really using force against him, but it is proper for the government to step in and say, hey, um, you're not cutting off your arm. Um, we're, we're going to make sure you're safe. So that's, that's kind of my view on government. And my view on government, I think, is different from Donald Trump's view. Um, but what do I do if Joe Biden wins? Because it looks like he's going to win. It looks like he's going to get, he's projected now to get 290 electoral college votes. Um, and we'll see what happens. I mean, maybe Trump can take things back. Uh, maybe his lawyers can really prove fraud. Uh, and maybe the courts will say, hey, um, you know what? Things were done improperly. Um, and I don't know, maybe uh, maybe some states, the elections, is, maybe the election is done over again. Who knows? Um, uh, we'll... We'll, we'll wait and see what happens, because as it was pointed out, hey, there's, this is not one election, this is 50 elections all across the country, and in each state there's different laws for how that election works. Um, so we, we don't have one unified voting system, we have uh, 50 states um, electing a president. Um, and here in New York, uh, Donald Trump won the vast majority of the counties, um, and it was only a handful of counties where uh, Joe Biden won, but because they make up the majority of the population, Joe Biden ended up winning New York State. Um, which I think is unfortunate. It's kind of like, you know, Empire State indeed. You know, we're pretty much a red state were it not for New York City. Um, so, <laughs> anyway, uh, like I said, long-winded video. Uh, let me get back to the point. Um, what do I do if Joe Biden wins the presidency? wins, steals, you know, whatever you want to call it. I I think if Joe Biden wins the presidency, steals, um, 
I'm going to do what my dad said. I'm going to live with it. You know, I graduated from from college here in New York State in 2016. and Or sorry, I graduated in 2015. Um, and I wasn't really able to find much work. Um, and when Donald Trump came into office, the economy really revved up. You know, it was like somebody put put nitro into the uh, engine of the economy, and things got a lot better. And they got better because a lot of regulations were reduced. Um, and I think they're going to keep getting better because I think a lot of those um, reduced regulations are going to stay reduced. Now, I, I don't know what's going to happen in terms of uh, uh, Joe Biden wanting to get rid of fracking, which, you know, he has waffled back and forth and then lied about and said... He'll say something and be like, "No, I didn't say that." It's like you know, it, even you know, even even your buddies in the liberal media called you out on that. But what do I do? Um, I think I keep um, I I think you keep um, you keep taking classes, you know, because I am taking classes online. And I don't want to talk about that in a lot of detail on here because, uh, for, for various reasons, but I'm going to keep taking classes online just so I can keep trying to get better jobs, um, and keep creating content. Um, I'm going to work on, you know, getting, getting a good job, you know, something that will pay the bills and let me have my own apartment. Um. I'd be open to the idea of a roommate, but I think that, you know, I, I just kind of want to come home and have a quiet place. Um, I'd like to be able to come home and work on my Noah's Flood video uh, that I've been working on for forever and a day, but I, I kind of had to put on pause because of grad school. Um, so, yeah, I just keep doing, keep doing what I got to do um, to live my life. And I think that as Christians, a lot of what we have to do is um, get back to a lot of the basics, uh, really focus on the gospel. Um, and by that, I mean, like, we should be handing out Bibles on the street corners. Um, I, I don't believe that what these, I hear people sometimes say, well, just focus on the gospel and then they just focus on being friends with people and don't actually share the gospel. And, you know, and then they become hostile to Christians who actually do share the gospel and actually do address other issues. So, anyway. Um, I think those of us who are Christians focus on the gospel, focus on apologetics. You know, because you can't be running around, well, trust in Jesus. Well, well why should I trust in Jesus? And granted, some of those people out there who are saying that are angry atheists. Um, and with them, you're you're taking their excuse away. You're you're making them say you're making them look foolish when they say, "Well, Jesus never existed." And you're like, "Well, actually, pretty much every historian um, agrees that Jesus existed. Like that's that's not a controversial thing. There's like two that that don't. Um, but and there, there's overwhelming evidence that Jesus was a real person." Uh, whether he was a son or God, of God or not is, of course, another question. Um, so when, when you make atheists look foolish by being able to answer their questions, you you do something good for the audience, and you're also doing something good for that person. Because that person, you you might be one-on-one -on -one with them, you might be throwing your pearls before pigs, um, and they might walk away and laugh. But they're going to have to rethink things. So adorable. Thank you. <laughs> so, there's a family and they're getting their uh, kids' pictures taken. Um, so, yeah, there's a. I, I think as Christians, we really need to get out there. Um, and I think we do also need to become politically active. Um, and I do agree with the statement that we should not let politics uh, distract us from the gospel. Now, for those who want to say, hey, uh, therefore we need to be apolitical, uh, therefore we need to 
and not call out the Democrat Party from the pulpit, um, and also call out the Republican Party uh, where appropriate, because you know there's definitely places where I think churches need to be calling out the Republican Party. Um, and it's like I don't think we definitely, I don't think we necessarily need a theocracy, um, but but I do think that. Um, there's a whole flock of geese over there. See, I don't think we need a theocracy, but I think the church does need to guide uh, the government. You do need to have pastors uh, telling governments, you know, especially local governments, um, hey, uh, this is this is what God's word says about this. Um, so um, it, it is the role of. I had a pastor the other day tell me, yesterday, tell me it's not his role to talk about politics. And it's like, well, um, here's some quotes from Spurgeon on that. Um, and here's the Bible. <laughs> so, um, it, I, I mean, you look at, look all through scripture and you never see once this idea of quietism. Um, this idea that uh, Christians shouldn't talk about politics, that we shouldn't address uh, the sins of politicians. I mean, you only need to look at the case of John the Baptist to see how nonsense that is. And you look at Jesus, he called out the Pharisees and Sadducees all the time. Um, and they were not just religious parties, they were political parties um, in, in that era. So... Hey, yeah, I mean, the ultimately we're looking forward to a kingdom, but while we are here, we are supposed to be salt and light, as I've said in my other videos. Um, so I think that that's what we do. That's what we do. We focus on the gospel. We focus on we focus on getting things back to the fundamentals, and we also look at these election maps and say, hey, some of these counties. Um, the other side won by 10,000 points. So it shows that... Assuming... For the moment... The, the numbers... Just, just for the sake of argument. Assuming the numbers are correct. That shows a very tight margin in the so-called culture war. But beyond that... Um, I don't want to see one soul going to hell. I mean, I, I know that eventually that will happen, and ultimately, I ultimately I think that there's election and there's free will, but I and I don't think that anybody will. I, I think God's got that in control. But I do think that, you know, we should be out there evangelizing people. And we should be out there helping people to think rationally um, as much as possible. Now, if somebody doesn't want to think, if they don't want to be rational, then that's another problem. You say, okay, when uh, you want to be, if they want to call you names and, and things like that and come angry and swear, you say, no, um, that's not acceptable. And I am willing to talk to you um, when you're willing to be rational. Um, the possible exception might be if you're in public and you are exposing them to a large group of people and saying, hey, um, no, Donald Trump's not a racist. No, I'm not a racist. Saying, hey, uh, the Democrat Party was the party of slavery and Jim Crow. And to this day, they're the party that... Um, fights against school choice. When we talk about systemic racism, pretty much all the systemic racism in this country is coming from the Democrat Party. So, like, like what do you want? Like, you know, you can't just say, well, there's systemic racism, then blame it on the Republicans. Squirrel. Um, so, I... I think that's what we do. We focus on living our lives and we focus on uh, 
doing what we're supposed to do and we just keep going. Um, we just, uh, as my dad says, you know, we live with it. Um, I think we're going to have to live with it at the end. I think that, I don't think it had to be this way. I think that if Christians were more willing to have engaged, um, especially in apologetics in the past few centuries, I, I don't think we'd be where we're at today. Um, I think if Christians weren't giving in moral relativism, if they weren't playing the stupid game of, well, let's all, you know, hold our ha hold hands and get along and, you know, we're all Christians, we don't have to fight or debate about anything. I'm like, no, I, I, I think that's wrong. I mean, don't get me wrong, I think it's, it's wrong when people have historically executed somebody for being of a different denomination. But what what we see now is also wrong. When we start saying, hey, we're uh, all one in Jesus and we're all going to hold hands and not fight and not debate and not discuss uh, difficult topics, that, that shows you really don't have unity. Um, because if you can't discuss difficult topics, um, you don't have unity. I'll use the example, like I... When I first uh, met Cody and Jacob, I talked about difficult topics with them all the time. And I, I very much disagreed with them on a lot of things. And there's a couple things I still disagree with them on, but I mean, I know I'm able to have a conversation with them. And that shows real unity right there. Um, so I, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know the future. Um, I, I do know... That unless Jesus returns in my lifetime, that the world will not be a paradise in my lifetime. I kind of had to have it occur to me today that um, we have what we're seeing now is on top of thousands of years of human history. Um, we're probably not going to see people come to their senses like I would like them to. We're probably not going to see them say, hey, uh, maybe I should think rationally about things. Um, I, I don't, maybe that'll happen in my lifetime, maybe it won't. Um, but I do think that needs to happen in the church. And I think that if we, I think within the church we need to say, hey, um, there's... There's a lot of problems. There's a lot of things going on that are not good. Um, and I think sometimes we might need to say, hey, uh, if a church is, is not calling out sin, you know, if they're not being biblical, then just don't bother with that church. Um, and that's something I'm kind of having to deal with right now. You know, there, there's a church I've been going to, and I'm, I'm not sure... I'm not sure it's a church. I, I don't say that to be mean because it's like they're very, very nice people and they've got books from some of the greatest uh, some of the greatest theological minds of history right out there, but I, there, there's some things I'm seeing that are concerning me. Um, so we'll see what happens. Anyway, thanks for watching this video. Um, Leave some comments in the comments section and uh, let me know what you think. This is Greg, out.